Nuzlocke turned Pokemon from the little baby man game there is to a series of pain, suffering, misery, and depression. I thought this would be a fun idea for some reason. Let's check out my brain and see what was going on in there. That's it. I fucking lost because this piece of shit won't fucking hit. Make sense. The rules are pretty simple. If a Pokemon faints, it's dead. You can only catch the first Pokemon you see on each route. You have to nickname every Mon so you're attached to them. So when they die, that isn't Rattata that just died. That is Come Lord 69, God rest his soul. You can't use any items in battle. So you can't just cheese your opponents by spamming full restores. No legendaries. Oh, and everything's randomized for that extra spice. Things start off on a high note with this exquisite set of starters. Oh, for fuck's sake. I choose Caterpie as he's the only one who actually has an attacking move. I make it past both rivals because the AI is literally coded to let you win. Caterpie also fully evolves really early. Or well, it would have. I stopped him from evolving for literally no reason. Maybe it's best this way because Metapod's insanely tanky. I then walk in on Beyond Bianca's dad telling her to give up on her dreams and become a productive member of society, which she refuses to do. Get a job! We then head to the lab, where Professor Tree doesn't give me the option to name my starter for some reason. After getting salaciously scammed, I tell my mother my time has come and head out. Where I run into this fella. Uh, how the fuck do I catch this? Good question. Because I can literally not damage her. So I have to pray to the Lord's of Oh, and I caught it. I lovingly name her Orphank. Yeah, I don't know either. And then run into a group of white-robed individuals. I'm pretty sure they're racist. This weirdo then starts talking to me and forces me into a battle. His purloin didn't stand a chance against my rock hard- I mean Metapod. Anyway, my next encounter is a Slowpoke. Yeah, we're really bringing out the Avengers with this team. Bianca then foolishly challenges me to a battle, where she gets obliterated. Surely we get a good one of the static encounter, right? With Harry by my side, I must have the most cracked team in all of Pokemon. Oh, and my Metapod evolved. I had to dog on Sharon to challenge the first gym where I use one of the most complicated strategies in order to make the most of my limited resources. I use tackle and hit them till they die. And a few night slashes from Orphank. I then hit the first roadblock in the run. None of my party can learn cut. So I catch myself a HM slave, allowing me to progress. Oh, you consider this to be cheating? I will fight every single one of you. I'm super ambushed by the racists who don't pose much of a challenge. Their leader uses Shadow Clone Jutsu and tells them to fuck off. At long last, I come across an encounter that isn't dog shit. It's named Fake Ruto because some people don't understand that Pokemon came out before Naruto. Sharon seems to think he's that guy now that he has one gym badge. I quickly put him back in his place. These guys tried squaring up with me. You want to go? Let's tussle, bucko. I proceed to flex my big muscles and destroy them. My manliness is rewarded with three solid encounters. With Swirly, IGN, and Furry, things were finally looking up. Until the freak starts spewing nonsense again. And before he whips out a ground type and I cry. Wait, no, he does have a ground type. I said that sarcastically as a joke and just remembered, oh yeah, he does have a ground type. Shit. <laughs> that was a relatively easy battle. On to the gym. I'm convinced that the gym is inside of this museum because otherwise no one would show up. I actually do use strategy this time. Starting off with a healthy leech seed, I switch into furry and get a thunder wave off. Then after taking way too much damage, I switch into fake Ruto. Finishing off Herdia with Ember. I confuse Watchhog. And thanks to some good RNG and that's GG.
She uses a goddamn super potion! So I confuse it again, take too much damage again, switch into Swirly, and then simultaneously have some of the best and worst RNG I've ever seen in my goddamn life. Immediately dodging a hypnosis, getting put to sleep as Watchhog snaps out of its confusion, immediately waking up, going right back to Dreamland, frame one awakening again, Poisoning my opponent and then poison stalling my way to victory. Let's go! I'm a genius! The racists steal some bones, as if the museum wasn't already financially struggling. I'm then sent on a fetch quest to retrieve the skull. Fuck that, I got an encounter to get. <laughs> If you couldn't tell from my primal reaction, that's one of my favorite Pokemon. It's named my goat and joins the team. I bully some children and beat up a racist before my next encounter, which is very originally named Egg. I make my way through the forest and find the thief who gets manhandled by my goat. I quickly retrieve the skull and hand it to Lenora. Cinematic bridge? Ain't no way! The next gym leader refuses to battle me until the racists are dealt with. So I send them to where the sun don't shine. Then I'm forced to sit for a lecture about how all minorities should die or something. I don't know, I wasn't listening. The gym battle's pretty anticlimactic. I just use the super effective type and win. Bianca shows up to waste my precious time. She's still dog shit, by the way. Surely she's just keeping me from the brilliant in counter I'm about to have, right? Ugh. What's that? What's that, brother? Bees is banished to the PC forevermore. Karen, why are you here? You are a non-threat. You have nothing on me. I think we outspeed. We do not outspeed. Swirly, no! You were one of the only good ones that I had. You were supposed to help me win. Fuck! I won, but at what cost? But at least Professor Tree gives me some Ultra Balls. I beat up some racists harassing an old man, caught a Whelma called Sperm, and then bore witness to a tragedy. Bianca's dad almost gets her to give up on her dreams. If it wasn't for that meddling gym leader. Not only is she one of the hardest gym leaders, she also allows Bianca to continue on her journey. Fuck you, Elisa. Encountering Pear and Big Didi is pretty pog though. The freak then forces me on a so-called romantic Ferris wheel date. But when I reject his advances, he calls me a slut and says nice guys always finish last. He then forces me into a battle to get his revenge. But get shit on because he sucks. Let's go! I'm so good at this game! He then tries and fails to get me into a dating sim with with him. Elisa is a run ender. She is one of the main contributing factors as to why I am on run 24 right now. But this time is different. Electivire's motor drive makes it so Elisa can't spam Volt Switch like she'd like to. And a neutral shockwave does pretty decent damage. But she's able to switch out for some reason. Gaining a special attack boost via lightning rod. Oh shit, I just fucked myself. So I switch into Orphank, who can survive a hit and confuse Zab Striker. Survive and do chip damage. Then switch into my goat and get a motor drive boost in speed. From here, I can two shot with low kick and take out the Amogas with a few shock waves. Let's go! Sharon gets his ass handed to him again so that we can see another cinematic bridge where I encounter Jelly, who's actually kind of good. I'm told the racists are up to no good, but I have encounters to get. And oh boy, yeah. Do I get me some encounters? Or well, I would have if he didn't Game kill himself. Man. But I do manage to get myself a Blazerkin. I call it KFC because yes, 
some more racist activities that don't matter happened. It's time for another gym challenge. I have the type advantage. This is going to be so free. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Bollocks. Thankfully, Jelly was there to pick up the slack. He took a bit of damage, but ultimately came out victorious. I'm starting to think Bianca is a masochist at this point. But at least she gives me fly. Play opens up the cave where I run into... Oh! Yo! That's insane! We need a cross cypher. We got the goat! Uber Fett will make a fine addition to my collection. The freak was waiting for me in the cave. He wanted to talk about how women don't know their place anymore. So I politely told him to fuck off. Apparently, he can't take a hint because he was waiting for me at the end of the cave. I'm sure he'll pose a threat this time. Oh. I'm then forced to make my way down to the Celestial Tower. On the way there, I catch myself firefight. I feel like I deserve this luck because of the atrocious start to the run. I then bear witness to one of the seven deadly sins. No, seriously. Who actually thought this was a good idea? Some executive at Nintendo sat there and greenlit this shit. Anyway, funny tower time where I slaughter my encounter. That was intentional. I then face two optional trainers with catastrophic consequences. Okay, look, I fucked up, but don't worry. It gets worse. I travel all this way just to have her make me ring a bell and fuck off. I'd like to give an explanation as to what happens next. My Electivire gets low, and I make what is possibly the worst switch in Pokemon history. So I have to sack my Venusaur to deal enough damage so that I can outspeed and one-shot the Duosion. But that wasn't enough. I seem to be going for a Guinness World Record in the worst back-to-back -back switches of all time. I impressed myself with how stupid this was. Alright, let's get some 07s for the boys. We lost everything to a tower, bro. Do I have replacements for them? Absolutely, fucking lootly but still. Thanks to Electivire surviving, Skylar was extremely free. The freak then starts going on about some course he's made, which obviously I refuse to join. Sharon is a bit tricky here, but with this team by my side, there's no way I could possibly lose. Unpheasant is easily taken out by Electivire. Servine gets one shot by Charizard, but then he sends out Simipore. You're probably thinking, who cares? Just bring out my goat and one shot the Simipore with Shockwave. That's what I thought. But what we failed to take into account are resistances. Electric does not resist water. So I end up taking a shit ton of damage, which normally wouldn't be a problem. But the final Pokemon is Lipard. And I make one of the biggest mistakes a new Nuzlocker could make. Overthinking. I assume that he'd predict my switch and use pursuit to kill my goat. So I went for a super effective low kick, assuming that the level difference would allow me to outspeed. He used a priority move. No! It was not even remotely hard to take him out after. I then get surf, which opens up the rest of the world. So after getting my cave encounter of Mr. Krabs, I go on a journey to get every encounter that I could possibly get to build a team. Boss God, the B-Barrel. Excadrill, my goat too. Rest in peace, Mr. Krabs. Your sacrifice was worth it. I evolved Egg. Krakura. She was named Crocodile. Tatakai, the Why Not? Zigzagoon, the Poochiena. And finally, Dusty, the Dust Ox. Only three of them will actually be used. I make my way through the cave and witness Sharon being useful for once in his life. This man then starts talking about towers. I get it. It was a tragedy. And no, my uncle had nothing to do with it. New area means new encounters, so we 
get Todd, Gloria, and Jim. He doesn't last very long, but the next gym isn't going to beat itself. Starting off with a one-shot from Charizard, things seem to be going well. Until Beartick confuses me with Swagger. I wasn't very confident in my RNG due to previous events. So I switch out to Fake Ruto, Tank and Icicle Crash, and think Ember will get the kill. This miscalculation led to Fake Ruto dying. How many more have to die for this challenge to be over? There's blood on my hands. Yep, that was a sack I had to make, allegedly. Charizard, no longer confused, was able to power through the rest of the gym. Outside, I'm told to hurry because the towers are under attack. But there's always time for an encounter. She will never be used. At the top of the tower, the freak starts going on about how he now has the power to make women notice him. Because of this, I'm forced to go get a white ball, which happens to be in these ruins. I catch a Carvana, but misspell Chomper. So now we have Chamoa. Now I know people are going, Haha, <laughs> English major can't spell. Look, I became an English major, so I never have to read again. I then find out I've been debated, and the ball was never here to begin with. So I head all the way back to that dog shit ass museum to collect it. With all that being done, I'm finally free to continue on my journey. We all know how this goes by now. Bianca, your father was right. You should have gave up from the start. It would have saved you from this embarrassment of a career. Bridge with no cinematic- I find out that the gym leader is slacking off. So I tell him to get his lazy ass back to work. I've run into quite the predicament. I have neither a dragon nor ice type. And I don't exactly have that many encounters left either. So hopefully, RNG blesses me. I mean, it looks like one. Surely the next one will be useful. I mean, if it was Gen 6, he would be useful. But my dumbass forgot that fairy type didn't exist yet. So I lost everything that I just gained. What? And the final encounter I can get is... What the fuck am I gonna do with that? So I go in with the best team I could possibly make and pray. It is not impossible to win. And that's what matters. My plan was to set up with Moxie and sweep. Fracture goes down to two digs. I tried the same thing with Dradigan, but got hit by a dragon tail, forcing my mon to switch out. The good news is I can still one shot. The bad news is I just lost my attack bar. I tank an assurance and get a toxic in. I then switch into Crow to resist the next assurance. I then sacrifice him to poison stall the Haxorus. A sucker punch from Todd and poison damage then finish it off. Despite all the odds, I manage to get eight gym badges. Now, there isn't much left to do. So I shit on Sharon one last time for the road. You may rest now, knowing that you are one of the rivals of all time. Yeah, you suck. I catch myself Batman and nose. With victory road complete, only one thing stood in my way. The Elite Four. This is one of the most menacing parts of the game. I'm absolutely terrified. I'm as prepared as I ever could be. This was a lie. I just didn't know it yet. Okay, I didn't read any of that. Tell me which one's the ghost again. If I can't beat this one, I don't think we can beat any of them. This is where the fun begins. I start off by setting up two swords dances, only to have one negated by Will-O-Wisp. I managed to two-shot the Cofagrigus, but not without taking way too much damage. I then learned the hard way that ground does not resist fire. What? To explain what happens next, we need to go over Eevees and Ivies. Basically, to put a long story short, they raise a Pokemon's base stats, and the Elite Four has every single one of their Pokemon stats raised, which is why this happens. Happened. What? How do you outspeed? I then fail to one shot with Jelly and switch out to an unfortunate crit. What? Gengar does manage to outspeed and get the kill, but just barely fails to take out the Golurk, resulting in her death. I then make the brilliant move of bringing out Furry, who Golurk is completely immune to. No, that was terrible. That was so dumb, resulting in another death. Jelly once again fails to finish the job resulting in its death. 
I'm left with nothing but an extremely low and burned Excadrill. There's no way I could possibly win, right? Trick question. Of course I can't. Not every battle is made to be won, but all isn't lost as long as you learn from your mistakes. How am I supposed to use strategy if they don't follow the fucking shit that's in front of them? You have stats? Follow them! How are you going fast and a Pokemon faster than you? That makes no sense!